Hello, dear ones. Tonight, we invite you to relax and settle down for a comforting tale that promises to ease your mind and soothe your soul. Picture yourselves in a cozy sanctuary, where every word we share gently lulls you into a state of deep relaxation. As the serene sounds of nature play in the background, let go of all worries and prepare for a night of restful sleep. So, let the tale begin. The Witch's Lost Broom Chapter 1 and the Turbulent Flight Under the pale light of the crescent moon, young witch Seraphina soared through the night sky on her beloved broomstick. The air was crisp, filled with the enchanting whispers of the wind weaving tales of distant lands and ancient magic. These midnight flights were Seraphina's sanctuary, where she felt most alive and connected to the world. Her raven-black hair streamed behind her like a dark banner, and her emerald eyes sparkled with the thrill of the flight. Seraphina's broomstick was more than just a means of travel. It was a cherished heirloom crafted by her beloved grandmother, the most powerful witch Seraphina had ever known. Her grandmother had always been a figure of awe and inspiration. Her wisdom and strength, guiding Seraphina through her early years of magical training. The broomstick, made from the wood of a sacred oak and imbued with potent spells, was a gift on Seraphina's thirteenth birthday, a rite of passage in their family. Remember, my dear, her grandmother had said, her voice a gentle whisper like the rustling leaves. This broomstick is a part of you. Treat it with respect, and it will always carry you safely through the skies. The bond between Seraphina and her grandmother was unbreakable, forged through countless hours spent together, learning the secrets of their craft. Her grandmother's eyes, wise and kind, had watched over her as she mastered the art of flight, always there to catch her if she faltered. The broomstick was a symbol of their connection, a tangible reminder of her grandmother's enduring love and guidance. Tonight, as Seraphina flew higher, the winds began to change. What started as a gentle breeze transformed into a fierce, unpredictable gust. Seraphina's heart quickened, her grip tightening on the broomstick. The stars blurred as she was tossed about, her broomstick struggling to maintain its course. She thought of her grandmother's teachings, her voice a calming presence in her mind. But the wind was relentless. Suddenly a particularly violent gust struck, and she felt the broomstick wrenched from her grasp. She reached out desperately, but it was too late. The broomstick plummeted into the darkness below, vanishing into the shadows. Seraphina's stomach lurched as she tumbled through the air, the world spinning around her. She had always felt secure on her broomstick, but now, with nothing to hold on to, she was helpless. The ground rushed up to meet her, and she braced herself for impact. With a bone-jarring thud, she landed in a dense forest, the wind knocked out of her. For a moment she lay there, disoriented and dazed, the eerie silence of the forest pressing in on her. Slowly she pushed herself up, Wincing at the bruises that marked her arms and legs, she looked around, her heart sinking, as she realized her broomstick was nowhere to be seen. The forest was dark and foreboding. 
the towering trees casting long shadows that danced in the moonlight. Serafina shivered, not from the cold, but from the sense of isolation that enveloped her. She had never been without her broomstick, her faithful companion on countless journeys. Now she felt vulnerable and alone, stranded in an unfamiliar and menacing place. Determined not to succumb to panic, Serafina took a deep breath, trying to steady herself. She knew she couldn't stay here, waiting for help that might never come. She had to find her broomstick and figure out where she was. Drawing upon her inner strength, she stood up, brushing leaves and dirt from her robe. Her mind raced with thoughts of what lay ahead, but she forced herself to focus on the task at hand. The forest was dark and foreboding, the towering trees casting long shadows that danced in the moonlight. Serafina shivered, not from the cold, but from the sense of isolation that enveloped her. She had never been without her broomstick, her faithful companion on countless journeys. Now she felt vulnerable and alone, stranded in an unfamiliar and menacing place. The trees seemed to shut in about her as she travelled deeper into the forest, their branches extending like bony fingers. A thick covering of fallen leaves and twigs coated the woodland floor, making every footfall sound unsettlingly loud in the eerie calm. She kept her eyes peeled, listening for any indication of her broomstick, but all she heard were the rustling leaves and the distant calls of nocturnal animals. Serafina pressed on, her determination unwavering. She would find her broomstick no matter what it took. The forest might be dark and unfamiliar, but she was a witch of great resilience and resourcefulness. As she moved deeper into the shadows, she couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of a much larger journey, one that would test her in ways she had never imagined. The night was filled with secrets, and she was about to uncover them one step at a time. Chapter 2 The Moving Forest As dawn broke, Serafina ventured deeper into the forest. She soon discovered that this was no ordinary woodland. The trees had a life of their own, shifting and rearranging themselves, creating and dissolving paths at will. Each step Serafina took seemed to lead her in circles, the forest playing tricks on her senses. Hello, is anyone there? she called out, hoping for guidance. To her surprise, an ancient oak tree responded, its bark groaning as it shifted to form a face. The transformation was slow and deliberate, the creaking and cracking of wood resonating through the quiet forest. The face that emerged was weathered and wise, its eyes deep hollows that glowed faintly with a greenish light. You seek your broom, young witch. It rumbled in a voice like distant thunder. Serafina stepped back, her heart racing, but her curiosity piqued. She had never spoken to a tree before, let alone one that seemed so ancient and knowledgeable. Yes, she replied, trying to keep her voice steady. I lost it during a storm. Can you help me find it? The ancient oak's eyes seemed to narrow, and it tilted its head as if considering her request. Follow the song of the birds. They will guide you to the, the village of clocks, it said after a moment. The words were spoken with a weight, that suggested they were not to be taken lightly. With a mixture of apprehension and hope, 
Serafina listened intently. She heard a melodious bird song and decided to follow it, weaving through the ever-changing forest. The journey was challenging, each twist and turn making her doubt her sense of direction. Yet she persisted, driven by the oak's words and her determination to retrieve her broom. Hours passed, or perhaps it was only minutes time felt fluid and unreliable in this enchanted place. As she ventured further, the forest seemed to grow darker and more ominous, the trees whispering warnings and the air growing colder. Eventually she reached a clearing. In the center stood a towering ancient oak, its branches stretching wide like protective arms. Beneath its boughs lay a smooth, flat stone that shimmered faintly in the dappled sunlight. Serafina approached the stone cautiously, her heart pounding in her chest. As she drew nearer, she saw that the stone was covered in intricate carvings, swirling patterns that seemed to move and shift like the forest itself. She reached out to touch it, but a voice stopped her. Who dares to disturb my rest? The stone intoned, its voice rich and resonant. Serafina gasped, jerking her hand back. The stone was speaking to her. I didn't mean to disturb you, she stammered. I'm looking for my broom. The oak tree told me to follow the bird song. The stone seemed to hum thoughtfully, its surface vibrating slightly. Ah, the oak tree. Wise and ancient he is. You must be Seraphina, the young witch seeking her way. Your broom is not far, but first you must help me. Help you? Seraphina echoed, her mind racing. She hadn't expected this turn of events. Yes, the stone replied. I am the guardian of this clearing, and I need you to fetch a wandering spirit that has lost its way. Bring it back to me, and I will reveal the location of your broom. Serafina nodded, feeling a strange sense of duty. How will I find this spirit? The stone glowed brighter, illuminating a path that led deeper into the forest. Follow the light and you will find the spirit. Be gentle with it, for it is frightened and lost. With a deep breath, Serafina followed the glowing path. The forest seemed to grow darker and more ominous as she ventured further, the trees whispering warnings and the air growing colder. After what felt like an eternity, she saw a faint, ghostly figure hovering near a thicket of thorny bushes. Hello, she called softly, approaching the spirit with care. The figure turned, revealing the sad, lost eyes of a young girl. Serafina's heart ached for the spirit, and she reached out a hand. It's okay, she whispered. I'm here to help you find your way. The spirit hesitated, but then drifted closer, its form becoming more solid as it responded to Serafina's kindness. Together, they made their way back to the clearing, the path now lit by the gentle glow of the spirit. As they approached the stone, it began to shimmer with a warm, welcoming light. Thank you, Serafina, it said. You have done well. The stone's light intensified, revealing a path leading out of the forest. Serafina looked back at the ancient oak and the talking stone, feeling a profound sense of gratitude. The forest, once daunting and mysterious, now felt like an old friend. As she prepared to leave, the oak tree spoke one last time. 
Remember, young witch, the forest is always here for those who seek its wisdom and guidance. Do not fear it, but respect it. With those words echoing in her mind, Serafina exited the forest, continuing her journey towards the, the village of clocks to recover her broom. The enchanted forest remained behind, a reminder of the magic and wonders that existed in the world. Chapter 3 The Village of Clocks Serafina stepped into the village of clocks, where time flowed backward in a mesmerizing, surreal manner. As she walked through the cobblestone streets, she watched in amazement as villagers moved in reverse, their actions unfolding like a film played backward. Children, who had just minutes ago tumbled and laughed in the dirt, now stood up and ran backward to their homes. Water flowed back into the wells, and candles once burned down to their stubs grew tall and new. Every building was adorned with clocks of all sizes and shapes, all of which ticked counterclockwise in perfect time, with the odd beat of the settlement. Grandfather clocks with their inverted pendulums stood guard outside stores. In windows hung wall clocks and pocket watches, all of which were counting backwards by the minutes. The incessant steady ticking filled the air, akin to a symphony of time rewinding. Seeking answers, Serafina approached an elderly woman who was sitting on a bench knitting a scarf. To her astonishment, the yarn miraculously wound itself back onto the spool, and the scarf unraveled back into a ball of wool. The old woman's movements were precise and serene, as if she had done this countless times before. Excuse me, Serafina said politely. Have you seen a broomstick around here? The woman paused, her fingers stilling as she looked up at Serafina with twinkling eyes. A broomstick, you say? she repeated, her voice warm and amused. You must visit the old clock tower. It holds many secrets of lost and found. Grateful for the direction, Serafina thanked the woman and set off toward the clock tower, a towering structure in the heart of the village. The tower loomed above the other buildings, its face dominated by an enormous clock with hands that moved steadily backward. Inside the air was filled with the whirring of gears and the ticking of countless clocks. Serafina felt as though she had stepped into the heart of time itself. The gears and cogs meshed together in a mesmerizing dance, each movement precise and harmonious. It was a clockmaker's dream, a place where time was both tangible and malleable. She began to ascend the winding staircase that spiraled up the center of the tower. Each step felt like a journey through time, the ticking of the clocks growing louder and more insistent with every step. She could feel the weight of centuries pressing down on her, the passage of time reversed and replayed in this singular place. At the top of the tower, Serafina found an ancient clockmaker. His back bent with age, but his hands steady and sure as he worked on a delicate mechanism. He glanced up as she entered, his eyes sharp and knowing. Oh, you seek your broomstick, young witch, he said, more a statement than a question. Yes, Serafina replied a mixture of hope and anxiety in her voice. Have you seen it? The clockmaker nodded slowly, his fingers continuing to adjust the tiny gears before him. 
Indeed, I have. Your broomstick was seen flying toward the abandoned city. It is a place shrouded in mystery and forgotten stories. Many have ventured there, but few have returned unchanged. Serafina's heart sank at the thought of her broom being in such a place, but she squared her shoulders, determined to retrieve it. How do I get there? she asked. The map on the wall with its moving lines and symbols, seemingly alive, was indicated by the clockmaker. Take this route, he gave the order. It will take you to the village's edge and beyond, to the deserted city. But beware the city has its own mysteries and difficulties. You have to be ready for what's coming next. Serafina nodded, absorbing his words. She thanked the clockmaker and took a final look around the mesmerizing clock tower. The journey ahead would be difficult, but she was resolute. Her broomstick was out there, and she would do whatever it took to bring it back. As she descended the tower, she felt a new sense of purpose and determination, ready to face the challenges of the abandoned city and uncover the secrets that awaited her. Chapter 4 The Abandoned City Following the clockmaker's directions, Serafina arrived at the outskirts of the abandoned city as twilight began to cloak the landscape in shadows. The place was eerily silent, with crumbling buildings and streets overrun by vines and weeds. The air was thick with the scent of decay and the echo of memories long past. The once grand structures stood as ghostly sentinels, their former glory hidden beneath layers of neglect. As she walked through the desolate streets, the sound of her footsteps seemed to awaken faint whispers emanating from the stones beneath her feet. The whispers were soft, almost imperceptible, like the murmurs of a distant crowd. They seemed to beckon her, calling her to uncover the secrets buried within the city's forgotten corners. Curious, Serafina knelt down and placed her hand on the ground. To her amazement, the stones began to glow softly, a warm ethereal light spreading outwards from her touch. The glow grew brighter, and she could hear the whispers more clearly now recounting tales of a once thriving city now lost to time. The stories spoke of bustling markets, joyous festivals, and the lives of the people who had called this place home. As the whispers faded, a single message became clear. Beneath the city lay a labyrinth, a place where many secrets were hidden, including, perhaps, her broomstick. With renewed determination, Serafina stood up, her heart set on finding the entrance to this underground maze. Following the whispers and the faint glow that still lingered in the stones, she found her way to an old fountain, in the center of what must have been a grand square. The fountain, now dry and covered in moss, had an air of forgotten beauty. Serafina traced her fingers along its edge, feeling for any sign of an entrance. Her fingers brushed against a hidden latch, and with a soft click, a section of the fountain slid aside to reveal a dark, descending stairway. Taking a deep breath, Serafina descended into the depths, the air growing colder with each step. The labyrinth beneath the city was a maze of ancient tunnels, 
their walls lined with glowing crystals that cast eerie shadows. Her heart pounded in anticipation as she navigated the twisting passages, her senses heightened by the unknown. At the center of the labyrinth, she encountered a mysterious creature guarding her broomstick. The creature, a majestic sphinx-like being with piercing eyes and an aura of ancient wisdom, watched her approach with a calm yet intense gaze. Welcome, seeker, the creature intoned, its voice resonating through the chamber. To reclaim what is lost, you must answer this riddle. What walks on four legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and three legs in the evening? With a smile, Serafina acknowledged the age-old puzzle. A human, she said with assurance. As a baby, they crawl on all fours. As an adult, they walk on two legs. And in old age, they use a cane. The creature, pleased with her response, nodded. Your response is accurate. You've come this far thanks to your intelligence and resolve. What's yours can be reclaimed. The Sphinx moved aside at that moment, displaying Serafina's broomstick sitting on a pedestal and glowing softly in a mystical way. With a sigh of relief, Serafina grasped her broom, feeling its familiar warmth and magic course through her fingers. The connection was immediate and strong, a reassuring reminder of her capabilities and the bond she shared with her broomstick. Ready to leave the abandoned city behind, she ascended back to the surface, her broomstick securely in hand. As she emerged into the fading light of day, she felt a sense of accomplishment and newfound wisdom. The challenges she had faced in the forest, the village of clocks and the abandoned city, had tested her in ways she had never imagined, but they had also strengthened her resolve and deepened her understanding of herself and her magic. Serafina got back on her broom and flew again, eager to get home and finish her quest. She could see the whole night ahead of her, full with opportunities and fresh experiences. She rose higher with every stroke of her broom's enchantment, her heart light and her spirit unwavering.